Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'da habita fillah one of the things I notice and may Allah help us and help them and bless us and bless them is a lot of times we have new Muslims and people who are new to the da'wah busying themselves with major issues like you hear, get a lot of questions about takfir a lot of questions about hijrah a lot of questions about hajr a lot of, you know about, about um, excommunicating people and, 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 and separating from one, uh, from one another and not giving salams and things like this a lot of things that are major masa'id and these are really not things that a new Muslim should be busy with. And even a, a, a beginning student of knowledge even. In fact, we should busy ourselves with those things which are going to benefit us in this life as well as the hereafter. It doesn't mean we don't have questions about those things. It doesn't mean that those things are not important. But it's, Islam orders us to deal with those things and prioritize things in accordance with their importance. Ahabatifillah. In the hadith on Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min husna islam al-mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni ruahu tirmidhi wa ibn majah bi isnad al-sahih In this hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said from the excellent islam of a person is leaving that which does not concern him so this is from iman there are many, many benefits from this, and this is the mawdu'ah. This is the subject that we're talking about now. That, first and foremost, that part of a person's iman, part of their Islam, is that in order to keep it sound and, 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 and strong, is to leave off those things which have no benefit, those things which are not important. Those things which are going to distract you from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For now, we're in the holy month of Ramadan. We're in the last, uh, now the last nine uh, to eight days left. We should be busying ourselves with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should remember, busy ourselves with supplication to Allah. We should busy ourselves with kira'at al-Quran. We should busy ourselves with uh, spending time in the majalis al-dhikr, in, 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 the, uh, in the Quran, in the masjid, and so forth. So those are the things that we should busy ourselves with, with that which is going to benefit ourselves. But I'm not blaming the youth necessarily. I'm blaming those people who busy the youth with these things. Those people who are in positions of being students of knowledge or imams in certain communities and what have you. And they're busying the new Muslims and busying the people with major issues. Brother, what's your position on takfir? Brother, what's your position on the governments? Brother, what's your position on this group or that group or so and so and so and so? And maybe the person is new to Islam. Maybe the person is a Muslim, but they need time to grow and they need ilm. They need to busy themselves what's going to bring them closer to Allah. And this is what you'll find from the ulama. I'm not speaking off just from myself, just spitting out words. But I'm speaking from the tarbiyah that I learned from the ulama, that I saw from them. Personally, firsthand, from many ulama. I didn't see them, especially those major scholars, scholars that were heavyweight in knowledge. They don't busy their students like that. They busy their students with ilm and fiqh. And even if they refute Ahl bidah and they deal with Ahl bidah they didn't force their students to, to indulge in those matters. Those are the ulama that I sat with. Those are the ulama that I have the greatest respect with, respect for. So leaving off those things which don't concern you, don't busy yourself with things that aren't going to bring you closer to Allah. From the benefits of this hadith, one of the benefits is this hadith shows us the uh, the it may clarifies us what is the most uh, perfect uh, deeds to do, and part of that is leaving off that which does not concern you. Another benefit of this hadith is it gives us the adab or ta uh, adab bi adab al Islam. It gives us the Islamic manners. It it, it gives us that tarbiya. It gives us the uh, growth that we need. To busy yourself. So ask yourself, anytime some big issue and someone wants to drag you into fitna and they want you to make rud on this, they don't want you to go in this masjid and they say, these brothers are not Salafi anymore, don't go to them, don't listen to their lectures. Before you engage and get into those debates and those issues and those arguments, ask yourself, 
Am I following the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Does this really concern me? If it does concern you, then go. If it, uh, then go with it. If it doesn't concern you, and there's no benefit for you in this, it's not going to bring you closer to Allah, and you're not going to be harmed by going to this masjid or what have you, that it's a masjid where they're worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and calling the kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then benefit. Another benefit of this hadith, Ahabat Fillah, is this hadith shows us how to, to distinguish good from evil. Tamayiz al-hasan min qabih. That's beautiful. There's so many benefits of this hadith, but I don't want to make it too long. But I, I want to explain this. Tamayiz al-hasan min al-qabih. That this right here gives us the tools. This is, this is an asl. This is a qaida, a foundation, a rule, a principle from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Min husn al islam al mar'i. Tarkuhu ma la yani. From the good, uh, from, the, from the perfection or the, 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 the greatness of someone's Islam is leaving that which, they have, which doesn't concern them. That's a rule. You can apply that to all, all the aspects in your Islam. If someone is coming to you and they're going to bring you a new story about so-and-so, even if that person from Ahl Bidah, they're going to speak, here's something the latest about so-and-so. Here's the latest, Hamza Yusuf just said this new thing. So-and-so just said this new thing. We know they're from Ahl Bidah. We know we don't, you shouldn't be listening to them because they can harm you in your religion. Why they can distort you from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf. So even if they're busy you with this, and this is not bringing you closer to Allah to gain that particular knowledge, you don't need to, don't sit and, and get it and get it, or you need to put it on the internet, you need to make a video about it, you need to spread it, you need to, you know, engage and indulge. No. Look at those things which are going to benefit you. And I think we'll leave off there. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with Amal al-Nafi, Rizkin Tayyib, wa Amal al-Muttaqabbina, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad.